well, the first thing about Norman was the first 10 minutes you were with him, you felt like, I know this guy all my life. And um, he was a very uh, a giving, kind guy, and he had a great sense of humor. And uh, so you got to feel very comfortable with him immediately. I got a call from my dad at the house of my friend asking me if I wanted to be in a Norman Rockwell painting. And so they came up, picked me up, and I got the story. And the story was that some way or other, he uh, was uh, going to do a painting that was going to be produced in a magazine as a lead to an article on the uh, co corruption of college football. He was going to take a trainer, and he was going to take a player, and he was going to take a coach and put him in the same picture. And um, the uh, player represented very good. And then the, uh, the uh, trainer and, and the coach represented the pressures on the player. I was then the football coach at Williams College. This was 1966. And um, Dennis Kelly was a student, and he was 19, and he was the player, and Joseph Altot was the trainer. They wanted to get an Ivy League type school that uh, treasured both athletics and academic success together. And Williams was in Williamstown, Mass., which was only an hour from Stockbridge, an hour from my hometown of Pittsfield. When I met him and he drove me up to Williamstown and back, we had these uh, treasured <laughs> private conversations. I really got to see this man as a human being. He was pretty incredible and very impressive. And, so he, at one point I remember he was checking out my face and he wanted to base the painting on the uh, sculptural work over the fireplace in the Giuliano de' Medici chapel. So he wanted, he wanted an Italian face. I was Irish and French, but I had a big nose and it uh, was kind of what he was looking for. And uh, so he told me that he was very happy that, uh, that I was the person recommended to him. When Norman came over to the college, he was a very original guy, as you know. He wanted the original benches and the original equipment, so he picked those out. And then we came to his studio in back of his house and started to do a, a, a photography. His methodology was to have uh, posing and photographs of the posing, and so he himself um, sat on a bench and showed me himself how he wanted me to pose. Uh, the figure that I was representing was a godlike figure that uh, was the central aspect of the sculpture work. And so he showed me how he wanted me to do it. And then I got up on the bench and tried to repeat it and he made whatever adjustments uh, that, he, that he wanted. Uh, then he brought in, there were three subjects in the painting, my head football coach, Frank Navarro, and our college trainer, Joe Altot. So he brought in, uh, I don't know which one he brought in first, but he brought them each into the photograph separately. And uh, so then Louis Limoni took pictures of two, and then in sequence took pictures of the three of us. If you notice in the picture, you'll see my fingers. And he said, so I asked him, why is he spending so much time on a hand and fingers? And he says, that gives the picture motion. He did a lot of little things like that. Well, uh, it really impacted me in some ways for the rest of my life because um, when the painting first came out, I got a lot of calls from people and um, it was just a, a, a source of joy uh, for discussion with people about the painting, about Norman Rockwell, some of the questions you were asking, how did this happen, how did it result. Uh, but I can remember getting postcards for the next, uh, you know, I think the most recent one I got might have been about four or five years ago. So there was always that renewal that occurred every time I got some kind of note from someone that had seen the painting, had read about it for the first time or whatever, and you know, always very complimentary statements. And it was a great way to have connected with people that I hadn't seen for some time. That happened very often. It, it, it generally comes up after a while because when they look you up on the Truth Finder, their smartphone, they see 
that you had posed for, you were a model. And um, it depends on who they are. I live in a retirement home and some of the ladies say, that's not you, it doesn't look like you. <laughs> I know it, that was a thousand years ago. That's why it doesn't look like me. <laughs>